Hi, this is Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. It's Wednesday, October 16th, 2024. Uh, this is an update on the tropics uh, for the sensitive information sharing environment, part of the All Hazards Consortium, where we share information uh, between private sector uh, liaisons within state emergency operation centers and the private sector themselves, those moving food, fuel, medical supplies, uh, pharmaceuticals logistics across the country uh, to keep commerce going and to keep power restored to uh, many utilities across the country uh, we keep on the same page at the same time. Well, I have two uh, different channels from the GO satellite turned on here with this tropical sector. One is the visible clouds, what we can see during the day as the sun rises. We can see the clouds reflecting the sun. Uh, that's what we see right now. And also underneath uh, the sea surface temperature information uh, that is recorded by satellites, multiple satellites, both from NASA and NOAA, uh, where we can see where the cooler and warmer waters are. Uh, and so I want to focus in on two areas, same areas we were looking at last uh, yesterday uh, and for the last uh, couple of days. This area in the southwestern Caribbean uh, is uh, has a chance, 20 percent chance over the next seven days of developing into something. And uh, we're going to be watching that because while confidence really isn't high that anything's going to develop, which is great news, uh, these uh, tropical low pressure systems do tend to drop a lot of rain flooding rain uh, in areas of Central America, uh, Honduras, uh, could also work its way up into uh, Belize as well uh, over the next week or so. Uh, so you can see sort of some kind of uh, counterclockwise rotation. It's not organized at all, uh, and the models uh, don't really do a whole lot with it, uh, except for develop a lot of rain in Central America. The other area that we're watching is out here. This is AL94. Uh, it's Invest uh, 94L, some people call it as well. Uh, and that just allows the Hurricane Center to run models on this uh, system, this low pressure system, to see how it is going to develop uh, given the uh, atmospheric uh, and oceanic conditions that are out there right now. Uh, let's zoom in on this one just a little bit uh, so you can see the sea surface temperatures. Remember yesterday, it was coming out of these cooler temperatures, say cooler, uh, still 80 to 81 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Now it's moving into more favorable oceanic temperatures, heat content, that's what we call it, uh, of uh, 83, 84 degrees. And uh, it is showing a couple of uh, showers and thunderstorms that are popping up. Uh, this may be developing. It's still a couple days away from impacting anything. Uh, and it's still uh, not really much uh, to be impressed about from a tropical meteorolo meteorology perspective. Uh, however, we know everyone is concerned about anything uh, that comes out of the tropical Atlantic this time of year. Uh, while we're past the peak of the hurricane season, that is uh, actually on September 11th is the peak of hurricane season, we still have uh, the hurricane season to go through for the rest of October uh, and through all of November. Even though tropical season ends on November 30th, it doesn't mean that tropical systems look at the calendar and say, okay, I'm not forming. We have had tropical systems form in every month of the year. So we always watch it uh, very closely. One of the other things I want to do is I'm going to move over here into, uh, there's Puerto Rico and um, Hispaniola and Cuba, and you can see uh, what's going on here. I want to show you what the uh, heat content, the oceanic heat content looks like uh, from the perspective of uh, satellites. And this is the way it looks right now. Uh, you can see what's what's happening. Um, I'm going to take this full screen so you can see what's uh, what's going on. Whoops. Uh, let me take it here full screen and show you. This is uh, very high oceanic heat content. Uh, the map isn't uh, great. Let me see if I can make that a little bit better here. Uh, there we go. Uh, this is the oceanic heat content in the Caribbean. Anywhere you see the dark areas, it's very deep, warm water. So if a hurricane or a developing tropical system moves over this area, it has a lot of energy to draw from. But notice uh, that the path, um, uh, and I'll show you GeoCollaborate here, uh, the path that the Hurricane Center is looking at uh, right here has the storm uh, perhaps or the low pressure system perhaps developing mainly north of the islands, 
mainly north of the islands. This one here is in the Southwest Caribbean, very low chance of developing, probably just going to be a big rainstorm uh, for all of these areas in Central America, which is not a welcome site either. But if I go back to uh, the oceanic heat content, you can see that most of that heat content is south of the islands, south of Cuba in the Caribbean. This is the area that poses the most energy from an ocean standpoint to fuel storms as they try to develop into tropical storms or hurricanes. Notice uh, as this one moves to the north, there is a lot less, a lot less oceanic heat content uh, to fuel uh, this system. So that's some good news. And uh, I want to show you back uh, towards uh, GeoCollaborate uh, because we have some other things going on as well. We have uh, coastal, you know, small craft advisories on the east coast of Florida and along the Gulf Coast because uh, we have a pretty strong cold front that's been coming through. And all these different colors you see in North Carolina and Virginia and the mountains here, they are freeze warnings. Freeze warnings and frost advisories. Frost advisories for even central North Carolina, uh, northwestern South Carolina, even Atlanta. A frost advisory for tonight and temperatures getting down below freezing in the hard hit areas uh, that where they're working so hard to recover uh, from tropical storm Helene when it was up there and dropped so much rain uh, in Asheville. Even down towards the south, uh, it's very dry air, and this is a potential uh, red flag advisories. This is a red flag warning, meaning that if any uh, wildfires start here in this area, the wind combined with the dry air could fuel wildfires. And we certainly have right off the coast here, small craft advisories, and further off the coast, uh, we also have gale warnings. So that is stronger wind. You do not want to be out here in this area uh, of the ocean of the Gulf of Mexico in any small craft today and likely tomorrow too. And you can see these, uh, these advisories, small craft advisories continuing around the east coast of Florida, uh, even around uh, towards uh, Florida Bay, and then picking up again south of Miami coming up the coast. So small craft advisories and gale warnings happening there, as well as on uh, Pamlico Sound across the Outer Banks up into the Chesapeake Bay uh, because of that cold front that's coming through. Now, what I'd like to do is just to show you a quick uh, model uh, over the next couple of days and what that looks like because uh, we do have uh, some really interesting uh, stuff going on. Uh, I have this... Uh, Surface analysis, this is a forecast, uh, was initialized this morning from Tropical Tidbits, uh, and I want to just step through some of these forecast times. You can see here, this red area is a big high pressure system. This is our friend uh, in the Gulf of Mexico as well, because watch as this high pressure system, as I step through the timestamps, you can see there at the top of the screen, uh, this is initialized at 6Z, uh, that's two o'clock this morning. Uh, October 16th. This forecast was for 8 o'clock this morning. We're already past that. Uh, we're at 1235. So as I step back here in uh, forward in time, you can see this high pressure system really taking over uh, most of the East Coast and it's forcing a lot of that dry air down into the Gulf of Mexico. The reason I want to show this is because you can consider for tropical weather, the Gulf of Mexico is closed for business. No tropical weather is going to move into the Gulf of Mexico or develop into the Gulf of Mexico over the next several days because this high pressure is going to take over. And you see a little coastal uh, low developing well off the coast, but this one here over the next day or two is going to generate uh, rip currents along the east coast. Uh, and that is something to be very mindful of. Uh, not a huge uh, low pressure system, but one that will... Uh, kick up some waves as that develops and deepens slightly uh, into uh, uh, and hangs around there off the New England coast. But look at that high pressure system building in. Lots of good weather. Cold weather uh, is going to be around, uh, but things will warm up. So as we continue into, this is already Friday night, Friday night, uh, high pressure really dominates 
over the eastern part of the United States and uh, over the Gulf of Mexico too. So anything that tries to move into this area is really going to be blocked by this high pressure system. It's like a great defensive line uh, in uh, football. And I'll just continue this on uh, to show you that the high pressure is uh, forecast to stick around. And these forecast models, while I don't take them out farther than about three or four days for tropical systems, for very broad, expansive, high pressure systems, uh, the models uh, do go out uh, more accurately uh, out into the future. And so uh, this one is a valid uh, Monday morning. So you can see very dry weather uh, is expected all along the East Coast. Uh, a little bit more disturbed weather coming into the Midwest. Uh, but the good news is no tropical activity. And so that is terrific. One other thing I wanted to mention as well is we're uh, getting imagery in from NOAA. Uh, NOAA flies uh, damage assessment missions in their King Air aircraft after hurricanes hit. And so uh, we're now looking at some of this high resolution imagery uh, that we can see and take a look at damage that's happened along the coast. This particular area that I've zoomed into uh, is a new inlet uh, that was formed uh, for the first time since 1984, I believe it was. Uh, this Midnight Pass in uh, Sarasota, Florida, uh, has uh, naturally restored itself. Uh, the flow between the Gulf of Mexico and the waters in uh, Little Sarasota Bay. So this, um, this saltwater doorway is what separated the barrier islands of uh, Siesta Key right here to the north uh, and Casey Key uh, right here. Uh, up until the early 80s, but it was filled in uh, and now it's reopened. You can see the sediment uh, coming out here and into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see whether this inlet stays open uh, and they maintain it to stay open uh, or they try to fill it uh, back up. Uh, but amazing things with this uh, imagery and uh, I'll put a link in the chat where uh, you can uh, take a look at some of this imagery and pan around and look at some of the damage uh, all up and down uh, the coast here uh, around Florida. One note on the Florida power situation, it is getting better and that is great news. We're down below 100,000 meters without power. Uh, we're at 77,361 customers out. Uh, the crews still continue to work very hard to get those last customers restored. Some of the areas are very challenging and some of them are flooding as well. Uh, so that's really adding a little wrench into the mix. Uh, but please uh, thank Alignment uh, for all of the hard work that they've been doing uh, with Hurricane Helene and Hurricane Milton. Uh, this was the largest mutual assistance movement in the utility sector's history to restore power so quickly uh, for customers from Virginia all the way down to Florida. So power has been restored to 3,297,148 customers, uh, which certainly those 77,000 that are still out, I know it's not enough. It's been a long time. It will be coming back uh, very soon. And so that's it for this tropical update. I just wanted to keep you posted on what's going on. We're watching these two uh, systems out uh, in the tropics, uh, but uh, confidence is increasing, at least uh, on my part, uh, that uh, not a whole lot is going to come of this one out here in the Atlantic, but we are watching it very closely. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. Uh, this has been an update for the Sensitive Information Sharing Environment, All Hazards Consortium. We'll be back tomorrow with another tropical update. Take care. Please take care of yourself and also your neighbors.